Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about discerning the prophetic word in our life and discerning the voice of God. And I want to really talk to people who are in the prophetic, who operate in the prophetic, who are prophets. Maybe if you don't even operate in the prophetic, but you honor the prophetic in your life. This is a really good word for you to know. How do we discern whether something is from God or not from God? How do I discern when somebody gives me a word if it's really from God? And how do I discern if I receive a word from God and then I get other confirmation? How do I discern if that confirmation is also from God? Actually, this is really important because anytime you step into the prophetic, this is going to be something that's going to stare us in the face. So I want to just share with you a couple of things that I've learned and that will really help you in your journey. First of all, I'll just share with you a little experience. A couple of years ago, I received this really amazing prophetic symbol from the Lord and I knew it was God and it was incredible the way it came. And then a week later, I went to look at a property and on the plaque of this property was the exact same prophetic symbol that God had given me a week before and it was supernatural, like I could not believe it because it felt like it looked like God but inside me I felt like no this does not gel with my spirit it just it just didn't gel with me and I wrestled over that for a few weeks because I couldn't understand how God can give me a word and then I can receive a word that looked the same as that and yet how could that not be God and so I didn't want to be see deceived and so I, I wrestled and finally felt no I'm not going to go for that property. We are not going for that because it just didn't feel like the Lord, even though it had the appearance of being God. And looking back a few years down the road, I know it wasn't God. But at the time, I was so confused. So let me show you in the Bible, how do we respond to that? What do we do with that? So I want you to remember in the story of Moses, if you can remember that God gave him a stick, you know, he said, pick up the stick and when you cast it down, it'll turn into a snake. And that was a prophetic sign for Sarah, for Pharaoh. It was a sign and a wonder, and even for Moses. But then what happened was that the people who were um, the, the witches of the day, they duplicated the prophetic sign, and they were also able to create snakes, right? They, were, they actually copied what God was doing in order to deceive Pharaoh and maybe even diminish the word that Moses had received. And so, but Moses had a relationship with his father, because even though Moses operated in this prophetic way and in the supernatural way, his relationship with Father God was stronger than the signs and the wonders in his life, which is really key. See, we can operate in signs and wonders and we must and that we run after that and we love that. But if we're not operating number one and predominantly in an intimate relationship with our Father, all of that stuff can actually become a formula and actually become religious. Because do you know that anything that is religious and an empty shell and an empty tomb can actually have some really good qualities and even have qualities from God. But if it is not rooted in intimacy with our Father, we can really just go off into any type of deception. And that's why it's so important that we always remember there's nothing more important than our relationship with our Father. He will not allow us to go into any deception when we were walking with Him. Um, and so with that situation with me and the property, my, because I was walking with my father, I knew in my spirit, this is not the right property for us. This is not going to be a good move. This is not of God. But in the natural, I was like, but I see a prophetic sign on the outside, but the inside didn't gel. And I trusted in my relationship with my father more than any external word. You know, um, scripturally also, there's another story Really interesting, scary story in a way in the book of Kings. I can't remember first or second Kings. It's a story of this man who was a prophet and um, God told him what to do. But then there was another prophet who wasn't in touch with God, but he was still operating in some supernatural type of gifts and some of the gifts that were a lot of him, not always from God. And so this old prophet came and gave him a word that wasn't from God. And because this, this man wasn't trusting in his relationship with God, he trusted in the word of this old prophet more than the word that God was speaking to his own heart. Gave him, God gave him specific instructions to, to step into. But he walked off, veered off of the God instruction and listened to the man that he thought was the prophet, who was actually a prophet. And he went out of God's plan for his life. You can read about it. And, and that kind of thing, it shouldn't really scare us. All it should do is just tell us that, hey, you know what? The prophetic is amazing. And hearing from God through other people is amazing. And even when we hear from ourselves. But the, this is the, the truth. 
everything has to be rooted in our intimate relationship with God. Even when he shares something with us and we know it's him and then we see it confirmed in something else, but it doesn't gel that that's the way to go. We always step back and go back into that place of intimacy with our father beyond anything else. That's not to say that we don't receive words and prophetic things that are new um, and that are different. We are to receive those things and we are to be open to the prophetic, even when it's a new word. But when something doesn't gel with us, we're to test that and we to discern. You know, I want to tell you something. Um, if I was to ask you, what do you think is the highest calling in scripture? You know, what type of office is the highest office? We learn in Ephesians that we have apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors and um, evangelists, right? And you'd think that the highest calling would be apostles, maybe then prophets and down the line. But I want to take you back to Numbers 12 and I want to read to you what the Lord says when he talks about Moses. He says, when a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions. I speak to him in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all his house. With him, I speak face to face. See, the highest calling we have in the kingdom is being a friend of God. And every other calling we have is submitted to our friendship with God. So we're not an apostle first. We're not a prophet first. We're first a friend and everything gets filtered through our friendship with God. The prophetic words we release to other people, the prophetic words we receive, the signs and symbols we receive, everything is filtered through friendship with God. And let me tell you what, that is the safest, most amazing place to be is a friend of God. And you know, Jesus said that we should ask for Holy Spirit. We should ask for the prophetic gifts. We should ask for prophetic words because God, who is good, will not give us something evil. He will not give us a snake. He will give us bread. So don't be afraid of the prophetic. God is not going to give you a snake. He's not going to give you a fake. But remember that your friendship with God is what is going to help you to navigate and discern your, in your life the voice of God through the prophets, through your own words, through signs and symbols. So have an amazing day. Be blessed. Don't be afraid to step into more of the supernatural of God in your life because when you're a friend of God, you can't go wrong. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.